Well, let's go ahead and uh, get started. We'll continue to let folks in. Um, good morning. I'm Donnie Montague, along with my husband, Gary Montague. Good morning, everybody. And welcome um, to our, our uh, Zoom opening for our incredible show, Indomitable, with Lino Telia Pietra. Obviously, we are incredibly honored to be able to represent Lino and to hold our third show with the Maestro. And uh, while these are such uncertain times and normally Lino would have been here with us for our opening in person and we would have had a lovely festive party here in the gallery, it's wonderful that uh, we're able to get together via Zoom and I, I think we, there's many of you who wouldn't have been able to join us for our opening here in San Francisco. So there's a silver lining and we're so pleased that all of you are, are with us. Um, this show is absolutely spectacular. We have 30 pieces of Lino's including several pieces that he finished just before the shutdown occurred uh, in 2020. And um, out of the 30 pieces, over half of the work is from 2019 and 2020. In addition to that, we have some absolutely incredible earlier works in the show. So um, we're, we're just absolutely thrilled and delighted to share it with you. Um, the, the name of this show, Indomitable, um, in trying to think about a word, one word that describes Lino, that was a word that immediately came to our mind. You know, Lino, as you, you all know who know him, is just an invincible. He's powerful. The um, endurance that he has um, shown over the years, along with his generosity for teaching and sharing. And, you know, he just keeps going. I've heard Lino say, and I imagine many of you have heard him say that glass is his life. And, you know, he is indomitable. He, he is that presence within the glass world. He's a force of nature, really. Um, and we're, we're so fortunate to have, to have him uh, here in, in the glass world. So uh, with that, um, and, and I want to do two things. I want to tell you that um, everyone, you're going to be muted throughout the um, meeting, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to show you a video. We wanted to, you know, we thought about how can we show off the work in the best way possible. And we uh, decided to have a video produced of the show. So that's going to last about 10 minutes. And then we'll come back and I will um, ask Lino a few questions and then you'll have the opportunity to ask questions via chat that we will moderate. Well, we are also recording this. Um, it may be, you know, as soon as it goes well, um, we, we may be posting that. So we want you to know that this is being recorded. Um, we also want to wish Lino a very happy birthday. He celebrated his birthday on Monday. Um, so to begin with, before we show the video, I wanted to give Lino an opportunity to say hello and make a few comments. Thank you. Uh, thank you for, uh, for having me, man. <clears throat> I saw a very beautiful view here. Good morning. Uh, I would like to be like uh, with the joy of the, the beautiful mountain there. Oh my God. I think uh, very, very well. Joy. Oh, it's so fantastic. Okay. <laughs> that was. That was in Switzerland. Uh, Joy and I went hiking in Switzerland about a couple of years ago. Oh. And, and then last year, Joy didn't go, but I was uh, in um, um, Dolomites. Dolomites. <laughs> okay. It's spectacular. You mentioned uh, Dolomiti. You, you told me, oh, it's beautiful. You got to go. And I did. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Thank anyway, thank you for everyone. I think uh, we are great uh, to be uh, today, even with uh, the COVID, uh, the 19 is uh, terrible. Anyway, they give me our life uh, very complicated. Uh, but I hope in the future we're going better. 
I hope very much. And then I hope in the future we have a show. It's possible to have a beautiful party with the Prosecco, any kind of thing is possible to, to drink. So, <laughs> anything you want. It would be great. And, and now maybe we start to, to see the show. Yes. If you have any question, it would be great. Thank you. Thank you, Lino. And we have turned on the, the chat window if anybody wants to ask questions. Um, you can start doing that. Uh, just so that we're not overly mic'd with too many people here. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna debut our video. Okay.
there you have it, our breathtaking show that Lino has provided for us. So thank you, Lino. <laughs> thank you, thank you too. So just to start out with, I, I, I wanted to ask you a sort of general question. A friend of mine um, mentioned it, and I thought it was a great question. You know, you, you talk about how your life is glass, and we know you spend so much of your waking hours um, working and thinking about glass and blowing glass. So now that we're all having, we're faced with this pandemic and we can't do the kinds of things that we normally do, how have you been keeping yourself busy? <clears throat> you know, I always, every night I am busy because every night I blow a little bit. Honest, I think it's a very, very little bit stupid. But every night I do something. I, think, uh, I don't know, sometimes I come out tonight, sometimes it's terrible. But forever, I blow glass. And, uh, but besides the serious question, I think it's a little bit trouble because I have some idea and they, uh, like you know, they, my time running very fast. Yeah. And then I want to continue to work because I think uh, for some reason I'm not able to stop. Mm -hmm. I think I still like to work, I want to work, but in Murano uh, for me it's quite difficult then because of the last four years I spent the time on a state and then for me working in the state is a more natural now to work in Murano because for some reason uh, uh, there also is a very the people like you uh, we know have in Murano you know. <laughs> I think uh, you know one time I do one talking after maybe two years ago probably uh, probably 19 I think it's a uh, two or six. I think a two or six or ninety six. Anyway, I think it's a two or six. And they never, they never ask to me any question to talk about what I saw, what I like. And then we do the one talking in Murano in the school. And then I go and we have the people asking me if we we'll need the, the translator. For the, because they have a lot of American people, German, in French. But we have a lot of American, English, French, uh, Scandinavian, Murano. No single one. No single one. They are not interested. For some reason, I I know my life probably to work is in in the state. And then I looking for to coming back. Probably we have a chance in maybe next year. Mm -hmm. Because the finger, we try maybe to do something in the future. We have a new idea, new things. Well, we, 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 we put it in the pocket and we wait a little bit. <laughs> we, we miss you here in the States, Lino. In fact, that was one of our first questions on the chat was when are you going to be able to come back and, and uh, and blow glass in the United States, but there's a lot of things out of our control on that one. Yeah. yeah. So you know, I think uh, we we have the the, the, the thing uh, for coming back, <clears throat> but we have uh, some restriction. Now they tell to us that at least uh, three months, and probably we hope maybe January, uh, February, I hope. We hope we'll see you back here next year. More we'll see you. Yeah. Lino, uh, I noticed that um, over the last few years, I've seen more and more transparency in your work. And in this show, you have pieces where you're using clear glass along with the very colorful Marini. Can you tell us more about why you've decided to go in this direction? 
<laughs> it's a very easy to answer. <clears throat> Honest, I don't know. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, uh, now going like this. Now I feeling I need uh, some transparency. I need uh, some bright color. I need uh, to. Mm, yeah, I need uh, to see through for some reason. Mm -hmm. it's like this, and I have it in my mind. Something new is a little bit funny. Uh, probably came. I saw one old pieces probably uh, 100 years before Jesus Christ. They have this kind of technique. And then I think, I think, I think, and then finally I try, try how we to do, and do I do one small prototype just uh, to see how it works. And then work, but I needed to develop the, the, the project, the color. It could be bright color, but could be also a little bit, uh, little bit cloudy. Uh, no, I am very impressed, for example, when I am last year, yes. year we are in, in uh, Pal Pal Spring, and then I watch you stay in the, in the couch, and then look at the sky, and then I saw one cloud die. And then it's a very strange story, I feel very bad. Because there are this kind of cloud, and then it became bigger, 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 more yeah. bigger, smaller, sorry, smaller, 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 smaller. At one point, pop. Oh my God. I never saw one cloud die. And then I, the, at the time, I want to do something like a, the cloud. Uh -huh. The white. Maybe a little bit darker. I think I have described the feeling. We'll see. We'll see. That's fantastic. I and hope we have a chance to do next year. But I don't know exactly what is going on, you know. So definitely the feelings that that you have, that's that is pulling you in, in new directions for sure. Um so one of your uh, newest series is, is NASA, and we have two of those pieces, and they're just phenomenal. I'll share one of these back up here again if I can. Gary's gonna try and share a photo of, of one of them. So can you tell us more about your inspiration for the NASA series? I think uh, the for example, <clears throat> And then in this one, the clear one, it came from uh, one uh, beautiful uh, uh, building we have in the Vatican, where the Pope talk, and there is a very gray stuff. It's a nothing color. But I like it, they out, they, in the wall, they do this kind of beautiful irregular branch. Uh, but at that time, I, I want to do some color because I love the color. But I feel in the, my experience uh, to see something go moving in this direction must be totally uh, the architect, uh, the design, the wall is a very famous Italian architect, Nervi. It's a beautiful in the Vatican, beautiful, beautiful building. And they are very impressed always at this kind the pattern we have in the wall. I, I found it extremely beautiful. Gary's going to show the other one here real quick. That's the other one we have. And, and you also, I think you've talked, Lino, about how you can see through, right? So that you have the, the design on both sides and the transparency in these pieces yeah. is important, right? I think it's absolutely important to see that my work on normal is more specific. This kind of technique is very important to see through. 
to see the, the front and the back because it's a part of the same pieces. And they make the graphic in a totally different way. I, I feel it uh, must be like this. Okay. And, and obviously we're doing the best we can with the social distancing. There's seeing these pieces in person is just remarkable. It's really amazing to be able to walk around them. And we tried to convey that in the video if we could, but um, it, it is stunning in person. So. Okay. So uh, Lino, another question for you. I'm going to move to the Aventurini pieces. Um, I know. I have a question on that too. I, I know many people on our Zoom this morning will, will know about Aventurini, but for those of you who don't, Aventurini pieces are made with little bits of copper in the glass, and copper melts at the same temperature as glass, and that is what gives it its sparkling um, look. And so, uh, Lino, can you tell us a little bit about the history of Aventurini and also what it's like to work with Aventurini? I, <clears throat> the Aventurini glass, uh, born in uh, Murano invent in, in the 15th century. At the time, the 15th century, many people in Europe, in Europe, specific France, England, Germany, mostly, mostly in France, I think. All, they try to do the very esoteric, very esoteric um, um, recipe. They try to do, they're looking for, for the, the Pietra Philosophale, the stone, philosophical stone, that is supposed to be do, uh, do the uh, artificial gold, supposed to be do the artificial gold. They don't do it, my, they discovered the gold ruby, and they discovered the aventure. Why aventure? Because uh, the imitation, the desert stone, they have the sparkling, and this one is a uh, one uh, kind of uh, copper suspension is a lot, a lot of copper, but they must do also one kind of ingredient. Then they, I think it's the acid tartaric and many more. It's a very complicated story because um, you never know when it comes out nice. They call them in Turin for another dimension. And they give the name also the, the stone now in, in Arabic in the desert. <clears throat> Sorry, in the, the desert uh, they give the name of the aventure, not stone, because they want to imitate the, the glass. It's a very, very beautiful thing. Yes. But it's a from the 15th century. Uh -huh. Aha. And, and what is it like to work with the glass when there's copper in it? Well, they, first of all, they do the basic, the, 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 the glass. As it could be with um, uh, sulfur, copper, of course, but many kinds of coppers. They have a lot of coppers, for example, black oxide. Uh, and they, they put one at more copper, maybe metal, powder, and they mix. And they mix, they keep the temperature correct. And they must they understand the moment to stop. Mm. The, is it, the problem is when to stop, which kind of temperature you have, eh? because the experience is not enough. Mm -hmm. uh, Sometimes come out of wonderful, it's an adventure. Sometimes it doesn't work. The mm -hmm. star, the star, the bright is very often. It also is not very good for some reason, they broke him just because uh, the, the, the glass don't mix together. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult and unpredictable. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Also my work, I do one special technique. I use the Morini with a little bit chunk and then you must do it correct way, otherwise it doesn't work properly. Mm -hmm. 
It's a little bit wonderful to work, very painful sometimes to work. <laughs> but it's a very challenge, but I like it. Yeah, that's beautiful. You've made some beautiful pieces with it. Uh, we're going to move to the chat. And Gary, you want to ask some of those questions? Well, one of the questions I think is is, is always kind of interesting, and it's just the, the question came from Tammy Black. Can Lino speak to the intriguing titles of the pieces or the series, such as Maasai or Macaw, or where do you come up with your, your names for these pieces? The name? Yeah. It's in general, your, na your name's over all when you think about the various names in the show. Well, the name is a very strange. Sometimes I do one pieces and then I have the, my name. In, right there, Aquilone, for example, uh, Bilbao, or something else. Sometimes it's complicated. And then I give it the, the name and the, the piece I love, the place where I'm like to go, where I stay well, for example, we have the Borneo. I never been to Borneo. Uh, Bilbao, for example, I never been to Bilbao. I stay in Spain. I never in Bilbao, but uh, I love the name. And then when the friend Gary uh, do the museum in Bilbao, I love the museum. And then they go, I, I must call Bilbao anyway. And then I try to do a little bit, the form a little bit irregular, a little bit like a Bilbao, uh, mm -hmm. like a friend Gary for some reason. But not too much, I think I do many different ways. Masai. Masai, because I love Africa. Let's bring them aside. I up. love Africa. They, I've never been to Africa, maybe Morocco. And then go inside the mountain, but not very deep Africa. Uh, but I know the, the history the, the Masai, the culture, African culture. I love it very much. Yeah, the shields, the things, you know, for me it's a very, this one is a probably a little bit uh, uh, more Masai than Masai, I love very much. Yeah. yeah. And you've been doing the Masai for a number of years, but you can really see on this latest example how you continue to innovate and you're using the clear glass that we were talking about earlier. I think it's just stunning. You know, the problem uh, for me, I think uh, I spend a lot of time to do uh, research. I love it to do, maybe every single day, do new things. Because for me, it's a very important thing. The only reason, because I like to, to, to blow glass, is to, to do experimental work. Without experimental work, and the, the life is boring. You must do what you feeling to do. Sometimes it's supposed to be done. We need to do something. I say, no, we do something else. Because I have something in the night, the, I think, and they, I want to do it. Maybe it's wonderful. Sometimes uh, we are lucky. I think it's wonderful. Sometimes it's more complicated what I think. Yeah. I love to do experimental work. Forever, a long time ago, Roman, no Roman, Phoenix, no Phoenix, uh, African or oh, Spanish, American, uh, Opie, 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 because I love the form from the Southwest United States. And then we have another one, the beautiful name, with only one pieces. And then I have, I think it's a, from South America. I don't remember the name now. Uh, but we do one, only one pieces. It is a terrible because I destroy one name just to form one pieces. <laughs> <laughs> so, so another question that just came in the, uh, uh, from Rose Hagen, if I'm pronouncing that right, the flat panels are so different from the other work. The both wall piece and the standing 
piece. What's your inspiration for those? And I'll bring those up as well. I have several uh, inspiration, for example, I started the first panel, I think probably the first one, I did probably, I did in 1970. When I am in uh, the factory of Molina, they come out quite nice, very simple, clean, uh, white and clean. But at the time, I know I have the signature, and then we drop because they are quite long to do. In this case, uh, the, the Porta Blue in Campo is a one series I did for the color of Bonano, the island that we have in the lab in the Venice, where my family came from. It's a very unbelievable, beautiful island, beautiful uh, building, small. And then I love it. And then I do only one show like this. I think this one. And also the other one, they are totally related with the, the, um, the, Burano, uh, the Burano house, the view. This one is in the shadow, the Arabian, the canal, the Arabian, the canal, through, through in the, in the sunset, the evening, the change completely in the canal. They give it the all this kind of the, the form. It's unbelievable happening. It's a very it's why it's a very long, sophisticated panel. Because if you have the front, the back, in the side, it's a very long process. And this, I, one, this one looks very different on the back than it does on the front, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's glossy on one side. Yes. And, yes. Yeah. And it and it translates to evening shadow. Yeah, ombre yes. de la Sera. Yeah, ombre de la Sera. This one is a very also <clears throat> you see the canal, the water, the deep, the deepest water, the, the dark, and there's a, there's a lot of things anyway, put it in. We have a one experience <clears throat> in United States in 1993-94, and then we have a big experience where we work almost one year, 1998, and then we work maybe five years ago in uh, probably more than, than another session with uh, the 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 the, the Burano color. And then we have another show we do also in Kentucky with Stephen Powell, my friend. And then we do now some prototype uh, we call Alabama related with uh, the kilt. The kilt, the Alabama kilt, they are fantastic. And then we do something, something new I did. Probably this was a project supposed to be done. And also in the future we have a probably uh, we talk with the lady with the bonsai if we have a time. I would like to do one, I think it's a, maybe it's a 15 years we think about. Is the the one war the Jerusalem. I want to do one kind of one war in class. Mm. We have a, a project, is a very big, huge panel of good element. Or we have the many, many blocks to put it together and build this kind of the bonding board. The, we'll see. I hope we have a chance to do it. That sounds very, very exciting. We need to take a time. To do it. I am already playing everything in the mind, but we need to do it. Do you have another question? Uh, let me see if there's other ones that we have on that. Uh, there was a question, what does Kuma mean? So the Kuma piece was a new piece with the, uh, the work on there. Um, I'll pull that up in a second. What's the meaning of this one? The name. 
עקומה. העקומה, the sound of world is beautiful. I like it. Kuma is a little bit, a uh, little bit crazy, and we needed to find one crazy name, you know, Kuma. <laughs> it's perfect for this kind of pieces. So this piece is so gorgeous. Um, you can see it on, on screen here, but to see it in person, it is a really special piece for a number of reasons. First of all, um, with the Marini, that beautiful, bright colored, uh, floral looking Marini, uh, Lino didn't put a clear coat of glass over the top. And so there's texture on this piece where you can feel the Marini. And then as you walk around it, Lino has pressed the glass in, in different places. And so it sort of has this undulating kind of um, shape. And depending on where you're standing, uh, you will see a different shape. So Lino, I think this piece is really special and really spectacular. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Is there and Kuma, Kuma is a bit, little bit crazy name. I like it because of this piece is, is almost natural. We try to give you some seniority for the way you watch the piece, you move a little bit for giving some optic effect in the front and outside. Yeah. And it's very painterly. I think you and I have talked a little bit about that. Looks like yeah. a painting. Exactly. Um, so this question, I think we somewhat answered this before, but you know, how has the pandemic affected your work and, and your thoughts about the future? Is the, are you inspired, challenged? How does the, this shutdown and, and crisis affecting how you might approach your work going forward? But, um, on this way, I think uh, I feel it is possible for example, uh, if it were to blow in, maybe it's the only one guy that blow the pieces. We'll probably we use the same pipe. We we'll probably we need to be very careful watching the ants, bodies, a lot of sanitation things. We must be very, very smart, very clean. And maybe to do maybe some testing to see what is going on, you know. Mm. If somebody has a problem, we need to do. But I think if somebody works in Murano, they work, they have a, the pipe in different color. And only one guy touch one pipe, you know. If you move in different way, you, you sanitate the pipe before you work in the, it can probably a little bit complicated, but if we are quite flat, I think it's possible to have. We need to be more very careful. Um, I think it's possible, but it depends. If we go like this, no. If the, the pandemic is a little bit flat, maybe it's possible to have. In Venice, for example, we have until 10 days ago, we have a very nice. Now we have some tourists that came from outside, from, from England or France or Germany. It's a quite difficult to, the quite difficult now we, we increase a little bit the number. We call it to be up. I hope they now they do some testing before they came in this in the mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So uh, we have two of your bowls in this show. And um, I thought it would be nice for our our viewers to hear you talk a little bit about making bowls. 
and, and what that's like. You know, making ball, um, they apparently is a very simple form. But like the simple form, uh, you want to do it correct way. If you don't do, you don't do it correct way, it's not, not looking good, you know. You also do the ball, you have the beautiful opportunity to see inside and then I, uh, outside the meantime, also you reflect in the table uh, the beautiful shadow. Yes. More than everything, I like the simple ball. I like it to make it better again, you know. I would like to do, for example, uh, do one big show, only ball. <laughs> Smaller, bigger, wide, uh, different. I think I, I enjoy it to do. Uh, when I am a little bit down, and then I want to do something, I do ball because I like it. It's a very nice it's a challenge. Uh, like the very simple things, it must be like this. Also, this one we do the special Morini with the color. I feel it's a fantastic to to see from from the top. And Lino, what about this title, Waka Waka? <laughs> Waka Waka is a very beautiful title. You know? <laughs> it's a great title. It's a very. <laughs> I think uh, uh, they come out very easy, this one. I say, waka, waka. look a little bit, a uh, little bit Brazilian, a little bit um, Africa. African, South Africa, South Africa, South America. Waka, waka. I think I, I like about, I saw a sunflower one time, the Mexico City, in one, Mexico City in the, in the lake. So beautiful, and then I this one I remember I am very impressed. And then also, being if you do this kind of thing, it's a very beautiful to see the front and the back at the meantime. You see the looking like a water, they look like a waka waka. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing that you can't see about waka waka really on, on the picture is that. The Marini has this sort of violet, lilac colored uh, outline that adds another layer to that bowl. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, I think that um, we have covered. Most no, of the I tell you something, uh, my song is suggested to me because you travel a lot. Waka waka, what do mean? Do it, do it. Do it, do it? Do it, do it. Ah, that describes you. <laughs> <laughs> you are a just do it person. <laughs> That's great. Wonderful. Well, Lino, we can't thank you enough for sharing your your talent and your gifts with us and also for being with us this evening in Murano um, to, uh, to, to be able to help us officially open our indomitable show. Um, this show will run through September 30th. And um, if you haven't ever been to Montague Gallery, you had the opportunity to, to visit the gallery through our video, and we'll, we'll be making that available um, on, our on our website. We also uh, will be doing some um, Zoom tours of the uh, gallery uh, as we go through the show. So every week we'll be offering a couple of those. We'll be um, We'll be emailing and letting you know about how you can sign up if you'd like to actually uh, take a tour um, virtually with us of the show. Um, we have another no. question. One last question on here. We should throw that in. 
Um, and it's from Joel Weiss. And I'm not sure which piece this is referring to, but the floating pieces that look like birds in the background. And do you still oh, make Lino's, those? Lino's studio. The oh, of, behind you, know. right behind you, Lino, where you are right now. Yeah. Yeah, I think that we have the, the, the Arab, uh, the, uh, the seagull, we call Arab seagull or something. It's a very wings. The wing. We call Ara in, in Italian, but it's a wing. Uh, very beautiful one. Yeah. Are you still making those? Yeah, we do it sometimes. We have a thing, it's really complicated. But if we do it, we have some. Uh, no, we do it. No question. Okay. All right. It's a no hotel. Anyway. All right. Well, again, thank you so much. Thank you everyone for joining us. Um, if, if we can answer any questions for you um, about uh, the work and about what is available, um, please get in touch with us. Um, Lino, thank you once again. And- um, Grazie mille. Grazie mille. Goodbye thank everyone. You. Thank you for me to invite. And they want to say thank you everybody. I hope we have a chance maybe to have a drink. Yes. Yeah. Bravo. Ching ching. Ching ching. <laughs> ching ching. <laughs> Alla prossima fois. Salute. Salute. Thank bye you. everybody. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <laughs>